Through tears and in between fraught silences, Devla Ajzic refuses to remain quiet any longer as she walks around the e reformer Dutch UN compound where she was sexually abused over 20 years ago. Ajzic was 21 years old and three months pregnant in July 1995 when she was repeatedly sexually assaulted in Srebrenica while her fiancé and thousands of other mostly Muslim men and boys were taken away and executed in Europe's only acknowledged genocide since World War II. For decades, Ajzic did not talk openly about the horrors she endured after Bosnian Serb forces stormed the eastern Bosnian town in July 1995 in the waning months of the Balkan country's 1992-95 to war. When Serb forces captured Srebrenica, which had been declared a UN safe haven for civilians in 1993, about 30,000 of its terrified Muslim residents rushed to the UN compound at the entrance to town in the hope that the Dutch UN peacekeepers there would protect them. However, the outgunned and outnumbered peacekeepers watched helplessly as Serb troops took some 2,000 men and boys from the compound for execution, raped the women and girls, and then bussed women, children and elderly to Bosnian Muslim-held territory. Ajzic said she was sexually assaulted and tortured for three days before departing Srebrenica in one of the last buses packed with refugees. Most of the victims were hunted down and executed as they tried to flee into nearby forest. Their bodies were ploughed into hastily dug mass graves and then later excavated with bulldozers and scattered among other burial sites to hide evidence of the crime. <laughs> Many wives, mothers, sisters and daughters of those killed in Srebrenica have dedicated their lives to fighting for the truth about what happened to their men. Yet, in over a quarter century, only a handful have publicly spoken of the sexual abuse they suffered during the fall of Srebrenica. The women stubbornly stood their ground when confronted with political opposition to their request to set up a memorial cemetery across from the former Dutch UN base, where on every July 11th since 2002, they have reburied the remains of their loved ones. So far, the remains of more than 6,600 people have been exhumed from mass graves, identified by forensic analysis and reburied at the site. Srebrenica's Bosniak Muslim women were also key to cases brought against the United Nations and the Netherlands over the failure of the Dutch UN troops to protect the town's civilians in 1995, and the adoption of a European Parliament resolution commemorating July 11th as the Day of Remembrance of the Srebrenica Genocide. Among them was Munira Subasic, who lost her husband, her son and 22 other male relatives in the massacre. She, along with dozens of others, testified before a special UN War Crimes Tribunal in The Hague to prosecute the crimes committed during the 1919s Balkan Wars that followed the dissolution of former Yugoslavia, helping put behind bars Serb wartime political and military leaders Radovan Karadzic and Ratko Mladic, both convicted of genocide and war crimes and jailed for life. For having committed these crimes, the chamber sentences Mr. Ratko Mladic to life imprisonment.
For many Srebrenica women, setting the historical record straight about what happened to their men has become their life's purpose. Mi, majke, koje smo preživile genocid i koje se borimo za istinu, borimo se za pravdu, moramo se boriti do kraja da mladi ne budu bolesni od mržnje, da ne imaju mladi našu osvetu. To je naš uspjeh koji smo mi uspjele 26 godina. Nadam se da će svijetu proratiti svijest, da će nas zaštiti kao što su zaštitili i jevrejske majke. Da dobijemo zakon, da nas ne vrijeđaju, da nas ne ponižavaju. Having returned to Srebrenica a year ago with her 20-year-old son and his family after living for decades in a region of central Bosnia, Adzic no longer believes a normal life is within her reach after the horrors she endured. Her late husband banned her from talking publicly about the abuse because of the stigma still surrounding the rapes, but with his death she felt free to speak about some of her trauma now. She says she's still afraid to walk the streets of Srebrenica, a town now shared between massacre survivors and massacre deniers, because she never knows if the people she encounters consider the genocide a fabrication or even took part in it. It's hard to tell me that I've lived here, that I've lived here, that I've lived here, I've lived here, I've lived here three years, and I've lived here from the house. They've lived here for the last few years.